What we're looking at here is a AP Physics C mechanics problem for your response question from 2010. It's question number two. Um, and what we have in this is an energy problem with a little bit of momentum tucked in at the end. Uh, what we have is a bowling ball with a mass of six kilo kilograms uh, being released from the top of a slanted roof. Dangerous, but okay. Um, and it, the roof is four meters long as given in the picture. And this is the length of this edge of the roof and it's angled at 30 degrees as seen in the diagram. Uh, the ball is rolling along the roof without slipping, and this is actually a huge important thing right here because what this allows us to do whenever our roof, uh, whenever we're sliding without slipping, is it immediately allows us to say that velocities are equal to angular velocities uh, times the radius of the ball and that um, accelerations are equal to angular accelerations times the radius of the ball. Uh, as well as displacements if we were looking for that. So we could say, um, you know, displacement is equal to theta times r. And that's because it's not slipping. So that's a very important thing for us. We can directly correlate linear and angular speeds and velocities and accelerations, etc. Um, we also know the rotational inertia of the sphere uh, of mass m and radius r about the center of mass is 2 fifths m r squared. Uh, so that's nice of them to give that to us. We don't have to memorize that. Uh, in part a, what we're asked to do is on the figure below, Draw and label the forces, not to the components. We've talked about this before. Don't break up these forces into the components, just the forces acting on the ball at their points of application as it rolls along the roof. And there is actually a reason it's asking uh, at their points of application. We'll get that in part B. Um, but we've got three forces here. Uh, right here at the bottom of the ball as it's touching the surface of the roof, there is a force of friction, and that friction is acting backwards on the ball. This is allowing the ball to rotate over itself to start it rolling. Uh, we also have a normal force on the ball. Um, that normal force is acting from the surface of contact and pointing perpendicular to the roof or that surface. And last but not least, from the center of mass of the ball itself, we have the weight due to gravity which I often just like to write as mg. And because in this problem they give us a capital M, I guess we should be most appropriate and use a capital M here. And that's it, those are our three forces. Notice how I did not take that mg and put the components down the plane and into the plane. They're asking just for the forces, not the components, okay? Now the reason why they asked in this problem for us to draw a force body diagram where the forces are drawn at the locations they're acting is because we have rolling objects here. I um, mean, this rolling bowling ball is gonna have a torque associated with it. And if we remember, torque is equal to the cross product of the moment of inertia and the force acting. So because of this, we immediately have the idea that you know, this force of friction, which is causing this ball to roll, is acting at some radial distance right through the middle here. And that's going to be what we're needing to think about in part B. So they're actually setting you up for success in this problem. Uh, for part B, we are asked to calculate the force due to friction. So what's the force of friction acting on the ball as it rolls along the roof? If we need to draw anything other than what we've drawn in part A, don't put it up here. This part A is done. Don't muddle it up with things. Draw anything new down here. So if we do need something, we'll draw it down there instead, okay? Um, what we need to do this though, is we need two equations here. We need the classic equation, Newton's second's law, that F equals MA. And if we do this, uh, we'll see we've got two forces here. Let's take going down the plane to be positive, and I've immediately drawn something in part A, which is a boo-boo. So let's redraw this again down here. Um, I'm gonna say, going down the plane is positive and going up the plane is negative. This allows that the friction acting backwards will be negative and the component acting down the plane, the mg sine of theta, is gonna be a positive direction. So when I do this for F equals ma, I'm going to get mg sine of theta, which is that 30 degrees in the problem, minus the force of friction equals the mass of the bowling ball times its acceleration. Now, the problem with this is I currently do not know the acceleration and I do not know the friction. I'm solving for friction. 
The only thing I know is that the mass here is 6, g is 9.8, and sine of 30 is some number. But because I have two unknowns, I need two equations to solve this. And luckily for us, since this object is rotating, we have another equation to use. If we go and use f equals ma, but in a rotating sense, we can have the equation that the sum of the torques acting on the object equal i alpha, the moment of inertia multiplied by the angular acceleration. In our case, the only torque we have acting on the object uh, that we care about to cause the rotation is this force of friction. Remember, this mg sine theta, that was a component of the weight acting down. What we care about to get that torque is this force of friction here. In writing this, we're going to have r, the radius of uh, the bowling ball, times that force, the force of friction. We don't need to put the sine of 90 here because the sine of 90 is 1, the force and the moment here are perpendicular. But this is going to equal the moment of inertia of the ball, 2 fifths mr squared times alpha. Now if we take a look at this here um, and we kind of think of what we have in the problem, we don't know what the radius of the ball is here. Um, it's just given to us as some r. But what we can do if we take a look at this is note that I have a friction here, which I have a friction up in my first equation. So I would like to make some sort of substitution here. That would be nice. Now, the other variable I have is an alpha. Now this alpha isn't able to be substituted up top, but what I can do and remember is that an acceleration equals an angular acceleration multiplied by some radial distance. So what I'm actually able to do is I can take this equation here and rewrite it and substitute it in for this alpha so I can move things around. So if I do that, what I'm going to find is that RF is equal to the 2 fifths MR squared. And let's get the quantity of A over R into here. When I do this, I'm going to quickly see a few things. One of the radii cancels out here, but the other radii goes away here. So I don't care about the radius of the ball. This is a great thing. The only thing I need to do now is let's solve this purple equation here for the acceleration in terms of f so I can plug it back up into our first equation here. If we go ahead and do this, we're going to find that the acceleration is going to equal f times 5 halves over m. That's just bringing the 5 halves over over and the m over as well. So with this, I'm going to take this term right here and I am going to plug it back into our original f equals ma equation. In doing so, I'm going to have mg sine of theta, which is 30, minus the force due to friction equals, and I'll write the constants out front, 5 over 2m times f. Now let's see, this looks a little weird here. Hmm. Oh, but I also need another m. That was the acceleration. What am I missing? So this right here is a, don't forget, we need to make this ma, f equals ma. And there we go, that looks a lot nicer. What's gonna happen is this mass is gonna go away. Woo, that's nice. So now what I have is mg sine of 30 equals, oops, I'm gonna add this f over to the other side. So I'm gonna have 5 halves f plus f, which is gonna give me 7 halves f, and then, Let's just move the 7 halves over to the other side again. Um, so it's going to become 2 sevenths. So I'm going to have in the end here, f is going to equal 2 sevenths mg sine of 30. 
and that means it's going to equal 2 sevenths times the mass of the bowling ball was 6 kilograms. We'll take gravity as just being 10, and then there's a sine of 30 term that just gets thrown in there. So let's multiply this and see what we get. Uh, 2 sevenths, some weird fraction, times 6 times 10 times the sine of 30 degrees, making sure we are in degrees, yep. And I get about 8.57, 8.6. Maybe if I use the 9.8, I'd have a little bit less, something like 8.4. So maybe we go back and use the 9.8, see what we get. 2 divided by 7 times 6 times 9.8 times sine of 30. I got 8.4 exactly when I used the 9.8. So let's just uh, let's go and amend that real quick. 9.8. So I get exactly 8.4 for the force of friction. And since that's a force, that's in Newtons. Woo! That's pretty straightforward. A little long, but straightforward. Um, now what we need to do is we need to calculate the linear speed of the mass of the ball when it reaches the bottom edge of the roof. Okay. So what we're going to do here is this is an energy problem. Um, we can say that this is some height here. And if we say that the gravitational potential energy from falling this height turns into kinetic, it's going to turn into a kinetic of a linear kinetic for a velocity going down the ramp. And the ball is going to be rolling. So it's going to give us an angular velocity as well. So this uh, gravitational energy is going to turn into a kinetic energy of both linear and uh, rotational. But lucky, luckily for us, we have a way to convert between linear and rotational. Remember. A velocity equals an angular velocity times some radius. So what we do here is we just say that that mgh, and remember, um, since we do know the angle of the root, this h here is going to be the hypotenuse of 4 times the sine of 30. That's just a little bit of trig. So we can say that mgh equals 1 half mv squared plus 1 half i omega squared. If we want to look for a linear speed, um, let's get rid of this omega. Uh, we can say that omega equals v over r. So this equation is going to be mgh equals 1 half mv squared plus 1 half i, and then substituting this in v squared over r squared. If we go ahead and do a little bit of algebra, we're going to get mg, and I'm going to substitute the h in now. I'm going to call this 4 sine 30, just so we don't lose it, equals 1 half mv squared plus, and this is going to be 1 half times, in our i component, that, that moment of inertia, that is 2 fifths m r squared, v squared over r squared. These r's are actually the same because it's the radius of the ball. So notice I have uh, something mv squared here and something mv squared here. This is very nice because those are now like terms and I can add them together. So let's do that up here. Um, we're going to have uh, mg sine of 30. equals uh, the half and the half are going to go away, which is going to give me 1 half plus 1 fifth. Um, let's see, that's 0. 0.5 plus 0. 0.2, so that's like just 0. 0.7. Um, so I can call that 7 tenths. 7 tenths mv squared. Uh, we quickly see the masses don't matter. doesn't matter uh, what the mass of the ball is as it's rolling. The only thing that matters is it's a solid sphere in this case. And then finishing out our algebra here, uh, we'll move the 10 and the 7 over. So I'm going to get 10 sevenths times 9.8 um, times, oops, I'm missing a number here. There should be a 4, 4 sine of 30 for the hypotenuse times 4 sine of 30 for the height the ball has dropped. And that equals v squared. And remember, to get rid of that square, we take the square root of both sides. Let's run this number real quick, see what we get. Um, 10 divided by 7 times 9.8 times 4 times the sine of 30. I've got 28 there. I'll take the square root of 28, and that gives me 5.29.
And we can round it up to 5.3 and we'll just call it a day. 5.29, 5.3. I like it. And that's meters per second because that's the velocity coming off the ramp. Or rather the speed because of kinetic energy. Okay? So once again, um, the big thing here was just recognizing that we could do a little substitute here and that this is an energy problem. Make sure you have the right height of 4 sine 30 using trig. Uh, last but not least in this problem, um, we've got a wagon on the ground, uh, and it is three meters below uh, the uh, uh, actual roof height itself. So our bowling ball has left the roof. When it leaves the roof, it has the velocity here of 5.3 meters per second kind of going in this direction there. Um, and the fact that we're at an angle here does indeed matter. Uh, what we're looking for is what is the velocity of the box ball system at the end of this. Uh, and this box ball system, or this box with a cart here has 12 kilograms, and the bowling ball is another six kilograms. So that's a total of 18 between it all. Um, we're looking for what's this final speed here. So what we can do is we can use the conservation of momentum to solve this. Uh, what we need to say is let's look at everything going in the x direction here. And this means that we need to break up this velocity vector we found for the bowling ball into its x component. That's the x velocity here. And that is going to be given to us by the cosine argument of this ball, because this angle right here is also 30. There's a whole opposite interior angle thing or something going on. I can't remember my geometry. But that vx is going to be 5.3 times the cosine of 30 to tell us how much this ball is going to the right. Um, because this ball is initially just the 6 kilograms, we can look at the final system of 18 kilograms and figure out what our final velocity is. So mathematically, the way this will look is remembering the conservation momentum. The initial momentum, which is mv, equals the final momentum, which is also mv, just initial and final. Uh, initially, we only have the ball, which is 6 kilograms, and our initial velocity going horizontally, because that's what matters here, is the 5.3 time meters per second times the cosine of 30 degrees here. We're going to divide each side by the final mass here. And that final mass is the combination of the bowling ball plus the 12 kilograms for the box cart thing. We don't want to mess that up. We need all the objects there. So that's going to be 18 in the end. And that is equal to the final velocity of, remember, this is the box plus the cart, which is indeed what we're looking for. So now we just need to kind of throw all this together and see what we get. So 6 times 5.3 times the cosine of 30 divided by 18, that's 6 plus 12, I get 1.53. And because that's a velocity, that's in meters per second. So that's just the conservation of momentum there, it's just the objects staying together. Um, we're not looking at any friction or anything like that. Um, and we can do that because that ball or the bowling ball is just sticking in the very center of the box right there. So that's just a conservation of momentum. It's nice and straightforward. Okay, just remember to add both masses together. So a big rolling problem. Um, we're looking at a little bit of forces, a little bit of torques, a little bit of conservation of energy, and some momentum. Uh, but in the end, not that bad. And with that, this problem is finished. Take it easy. Have a good one. Bum, 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 ba -da -da -da.